Hello, welcome to FreeCAD's Electromagnetic Workbench tutorial by Fastspeed Solvers. Let me remind you that the workbench is in beta development stage and the present supports the popular inductance solver Fast Enric. In this video, we'll see how to define a conductive plane, connect nodes to the plane, and define holes in it. Uh, so, uh, actually, let's define a very simple structure that's a, a conducting line over a drum plane with a hole in the plane. And so we can see the effect with the inductance uh, simulation of the uh, of the hole on the impedance of the line. Um, actually, you need the latest uh, EM workbench version that's available as usual on GitHub. This is the commit you need for this video, this one or higher. Um, okay, so let's start straight away. First of all, the uh, conductive plane is based on a shape. The shape can be a rectangle or can be a part of the box. So for uh, simplicity, let's start with a draft rectangle. So here, let's uh, draw a rectangle, be the support for our uh, conductive plane. So let me select here the rectangle. Uh, for a reason that you will understand later on, let's not center the rectangle on the origin. Let's do it, I don't know, minus 10, minus 10, that should be fine. And extend, I don't know, 20 by 40 millimeters. Okay, so we have this nice slab that is support for our ground plane. Then we'll need some nodes on the ground plane because that's a connection point between the ground planes, and the port, and the line over the ground plane, as well as the hole. So let's just move and switch to the EM workbench. Here we have a node, uh, so we can define node here. That will be uh, where we place our input port. Uh, let's place another uh, node here. That will be the connection to the plane. And let's place a hole uh, just uh, halfway, okay, more or less in between the, the, the two. Okay. So now we can define a ground plane. So let's select all the elements that are composing the conductive plane and select here uh, the unicorn plane object. And so you will see everything goes behind the FH plane. And we have this word shape that's actually the representation in fast memory of the plane. Why the shape is not rectangular but is overlapping a bit? The reason is that in fast memory, the ground plane is defined by a mesh of segments and the segments overlap the boundary of the plane. So that, that's the actual representation within the fast angle of the, of, the, of the plane. Also the plane is refined, so you see that's the number of segments along the length and along the width of the, of the plane. So that's 10 and 10 by default. We can increase or decrease this number and that's actually the refinement level of the plane. Uh, why we cannot see the segments? Because now we are in a visualization, visualization mode that actually cores for uh, speed of representation. We can switch uh, to a coarse mesh, and so let me switch to, sorry, to a fine mesh, and in this case we'll be able to see actually our plane with the discretization. We also see outside the rectangle the hole now. Okay, so when we are in visualization mode, uh, without seeing the segments, you cannot actually see the hole because this hole is actually a point, no? it's a point kind of hole. So a point kind of hole just remove a single node. And so there's, there's no way to, to see, it. if you don't see the segment representation, you will just see one point. Uh, another important uh, characteristic of the ground plane, let's switch on the back, you see our nodes are here, just on the back. Let's move again to the course visualization, course mesh. Uh, okay, so here's the hole, here's the nodes. So we may have appreciated that the coordinates of the nodes now are rel uh, relative to the uh, plane origin, which is not the origin of the space here, so it's not the world origin. So they are relative to this position. That's the origin of the ground plane. That's actually the origin of the rectangle. That's the point. Okay. So if we put this node, this one at zero, zero, okay, will be on the origin, not the origin of the whole coordinate system, but the origin of the local coordinate system on the on plane. So let's move it again on 10. Okay, so just, just in the middle. And so that's that's really handy because uh, it's allowed you also to shift and to move the plane. The nodes will keep the same position. It'll be quite easy for you to position the node in the, in the, right, uh, in the right way. Okay, so let's also adjust this one, which is not exact. Okay, so let's make it exact. Okay, that's fine. Um, Let's now change the, the hole from a simple point to another kind of hole. It can be a rectangular hole or a circular hole. Uh, for a rectangular hole, we need to define a length and we need to define a width. 
for the hole. And so we can change now to rectangular hole. So we'll see here we have a nice rectangle that representing the hole. Again, we need to switch to the uh, fine mesh kind of representation to actually see the hole. Okay, then we can hide this node. Uh, to this, uh, this shape to see the hole. Why the hole is so offset? Well, actually, again, that depends on the internal representation and past tense about the, the node. So we are approximating the two coordinates of the, the, of the hole, the two corners of the rectangular hole, uh, with the closest node in the internal grid of nodes that are supporting the segment. That's, again, how past tense works. And so you can actually see where you're forming your node. Uh, if you increase the, uh, the density of the segment, so if you increase, uh, for instance, 15, you will see that this hole tends to stick closer actually to the actual shape of the hole here. And you can also move uh, the hole a bit if you want uh, to be more centered. Anyway, in this case, we want the hole just in between, so let's move it to uh, a different position. Let's make it 20 here. Let's make it five, okay. And so, in terms of uh, width, we can make it ten, okay. And so, oh, sorry, it's too much, okay. Ten. So, we have a nice hole in between. We can hide this one and can just let the, the hole in the plane, okay. So far, for the for the ground plane, you may also have appreciated that the note has changed the color here from red to blue because they're representing now holes, uh, sorry, nodes on the on the conductive plane. And okay, let's switch again to the top view. Okay, here you may want to turn down the fine mesh. Okay, so it can work more easily. If you want to see the nose, you can also change the uh, appearance so we can make the plane transparent so we can see the nodes uh, through, through the plane. Okay, so let's place some other nodes here that would be supporting our segment. Okay, on top of the plane. Okay, these nodes you may see are not in the local plane coordinate system. That's in the in the global coordinate system. So that's minus ten and not zero. Okay, well for the node that just behind this one, it was zero. Okay, so let's uh, let's actually fix it in position and let's make it a bit higher that uh, zero dot ten that the standard the whole thickness of the plane. Let's make it up four millimeters so let's make it uh, stand up a bit with respect to the plane same things here let's make it 20 make it zero and zero to 40. okay so we look from the side you can see the nodes are a bit above the plane so now we can select the whole the whole the nodes here and create a segment so let's look from the top we have the ground plane we have the segment on top of it if we switch again to the uh, fine mesh, we will see the whole the segment, everything is in place. So now we need to connect things together because actually this segment is not connected to the plane and there's no port. So first of all, here you may create a vertical segment between this node and node just behind it. But actually, it would be an overkill. So let's just short the two nodes together because they are so close from a ductus perspective, they won't, they won't be making any, uh, any change. Okay, so we can select the two nodes here. So we select the node on the plane, we select the node on the segment, should be drawn. Okay, fine. And we create a sharp between the two nodes. Okay. You will see here we create a new element, which is a quick statement in past memory, actually. Okay. And that's actually uh, shorting together these two nodes. Okay. And then we need to create a port on the other hand. So that's the input port. So let's uh, select uh, the first node. Okay, I'm gonna make it not so easy. Okay, and then let's select the nodes on the plane. Should be one or that one. Okay, and we can create a port. Okay. And so we created a port. So we are all set here for actually creating uh, our uh, past memory input file. Okay, so let's go. Uh, here we need to delay the old one, uh, otherwise it will be overlapping. Okay, and so now we have to add the usual simulation here. So we have a solver element, and uh, name of the file is past tense input file, so we can export. Okay, and now we export the file. So we can now switch to the visualization 
uh, mode and uh, see uh, the file in fast mode. I've already opened the file so you can see here are the results because the actual file has been generated by the workbench. If you are uh, proficient and familiar with fast Embry, you may also notice that there's no need to short the internal uh, conductive plane node to, a, to another node you define it just outside the plane or just uh, co coincident with the same point as a standard would require okay? because uh, the workbench will handle that for you so you don't need to worry about it, that part so connected internal plane nodes to actual nodes is done automatically okay so we have the shorts here that's a true statement the ports everything is set so we can also see here in fast mode of how the things look like which is exactly the same view that you also have in the, in the workbench okay and then we can fire simulation okay so we run the simulation okay and here we get the result okay. you can see how the inductance uh, decreases with the frequency and so on and so forth of course this is just an example uh, probably the, the, the refinement is not so um, so fine to allow a very uh, precise calculation of inductance but just for showing you the capabilities of the solar so thank you very much thank you for watching this video see you soon for further updates on the workbench